Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and yes, I'm alive. I've been on a lovely holiday actually, and haven't really played many games or made videos at all. I actually got informed that the last time I played this game was three months ago. Thanks, Steam. And in this video, I kind of just wanted to talk about Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles and title it like a 2023 review. Because now that I haven't played the game for a while, I've had a little bit of time to reflect about how I really feel about the game and like how it did in comparison to other games of its genre and you know if it's a good game or not now that we're in 2023 and it's been about it's been out for well over a year now so i'm gonna think split this into like three ways of looking at the game how it was how it is and how it will be so yeah when the game came out this game was kind of almost I wouldn't say revolutionary, but it was really successful and really um, had a lot of potential and people really, really loved it as it was coming out. I remember as it was coming out, they like revealed some of their like development of the visual effects and stuff. And it took a very long time for this game to come out, but you can tell that they did really well. And when the game came out, one of the biggest sells is that they spent a lot of time trying to get the art style perfect. And I think they did a really, really awesome job of that. This character art here on the main screen is obviously just like the anime, but even in game, they managed to get a perfect blend of like the 3D um, video game anime arena fighter with the amazing art style of the anime, which is what the anime was kind of famed for which is a really, really good job. And you can tell that that's probably what they spent most of the time developing this game around, just making the art style perfect and look beautiful. And on top of the game, just looking astounding and having just, I don't know how else to word this, amazing visuals. It looks great. There's great particle effects, great character models. Everything looks really pretty smooth. And in the story mode as well, things look pretty nice. Characters move fine and it's really good. But the other thing that also was a super, super big hit for this game, good hit, not a bad hit, <laughs> was that the battle system actually seemed to be a lot more fleshed out than what players are usually used to when it comes to an anime game, especially like an arena fighter anime game. So this game, it seems like it was kind of promising to be a bit more of a competitive experience. So that it had a lot more system mechanics, like obviously there's armor attacks and grabs, but there's also different ways of like going on defense. There's of course invincible attacks, but there's also push blocks to get the opponent away. There's also your guard can break if you block too many things. You have a combo breaker, you have supports, you have uh, three different types of meter <laughs> and there's even like some unique types of like combo scaling and combo like ways of making combos not infinite. They've got like timing scaling as well as damage scaling, which is all really interesting and made this game seem really cool competitive wise. And it also did the appeal to beginners, which is something that's very popular these days, where it's very easy to pick up and play this game. You have your default combo string and you have an up and down version of it. So it's super easy to execute things and special moves are just a single button with a directional input. So it's very easy to execute any combos as long as you know like what your buttons are doing. And you can even just mash buttons and you'll do pretty well. It's one button supers, one button specials, and doing everything is really quite simple. There's even like a super dash to make it like really easy to just go on offense. So this game was a huge hit when it came to having gorgeous visual effects and really promising kind of like competitive gameplay and welcoming gameplay to new players. And this was even furthered by the fact that within like the first few months of the game being out, they actually released an update to balance the game's like actual gameplay style, which was surprising because usually with games like this, you kind or anime games in general, you can't expect them to put too much effort into the, um, the actual balance of the game or changing the system mechanics, but within the first few months they released a pretty decent balance patch that changed things like the type of scaling, I mean the type of um, tracking on dashes and tracking on sidesteps and stuff so that things weren't so abusable and it adjust, it um, kind of uh, addressed a lot of the core issues that people had with the game. And that was really, really good. And they started even releasing some free DLC. So they did a lot of, lot of things really, really right. It was really, really amazing. And um, 
this all this stuff is actually reflected in the Steam reviews for the game. So if I open up where is Steam here, you can see that it's got very positive reviews. People really like this game and rate it really well. All the reviews are like, yep, yeah, it's a really good game, good graphics, got good grinds. It's just uh, a generally good game, and I agree. This game is a good game, but because this is a review, I'm gonna also talk about what makes it not so good. And unfortunately, this is kind of... I've kind of mentioned everything that is good about this game. And unfortunately, there are a few things that make it not so good, and that make it kind of flop in some ways. And let's talk about them. So for me, what I think kind of has made me kind of not burnt out from the game, because I was never like a huge, huge constant player of it. But I think I, what made me and a lot of other people just kind of drift away is that you can tell that it missed that core, like bit of like guts and love in the game. And not that the players didn't love it, but you can tell that the developers didn't really have that extra bit of um, love put into the game. So I think this is kind of really reflected in the story mode. So you can tell that this game, as I said, has beautiful graphics, has everything that makes it a really sellable game. You watch trailers and you see that it's like a cool combat game, it's got amazing graphics, so you sell a lot of copies and can make a lot of money off of that alone. And it's got a story mode, and for various reasons, you can tell that this game was kind of meant to be a story-based game, because there are a lot of things kind of missing to make it a primarily online versus game like it's missing things like like um tournament mode and great connections and a lot of things that just help a community like bring together an online game it kind of has like online versus as a secondary aspect so the story is meant to be the main thing but unfortunately it's also kind of in my opinion the worst thing about this game and that's kind of reflected by the fact that on steam i have i cannot bring myself to finish this story mode i have like over the course of a year, slowly been like, oh, I kind of want to be able to play the other characters on Steam, but I just can't bring myself to do it because I find it so excruciatingly boring. There is not too much to love about the story mode, in my opinion. Of course, it looks great, and that's kind of about it. When you're in the story mode, I don't really want to go in right now, but maybe I'll show clips of the story mode. You kind of go into a level, you know what the story is because you're here because you've watched the anime. You know what the story is. So reliving it isn't really that exciting. So that whole premise kind of already knocks it down a few notches. But then when you're in the story mode, basically every level is the same. You get dropped in a place. There's a bunch of dialogue with some people you already know and know the story of. Then you just walk along basically a linear path with a few little tiny branches off to the side. You walk along the path you pick up things off the floor and you pick up the scents and then randomly in these pretty predictable areas a demon will oh no spawn and then you can defeat it in like five hits and it's not a challenge at all and that's kind of the essence of it and it becomes so boring really because the only thing that makes it difficult is like sometimes you're walking around and you're trying to find like there's no run, you just walk at a certain speed. So you just walk into all these places, trying to find this thing you need to find to move on. And there's not even a real sense of, you don't feel the urge, or at least I don't feel the urge to explore in this game. Because exploring just means like taking one left turn into this little branch so that I can pick up this little shining thing that gives me things called memories, which I know what the memories are. I've watched the anime and read the manga. I don't need to see the video game's interpretation of these little scenes from it. So I have, picking up these things, I'm like, oh great. And if I'm not picking up a memory, I'm picking up some, I don't know, but not berries, but some kind of money, which just means that I can unlock characters before I have to, before I unlock them in the story mode, or I can pay for some, like a few skins, there are not many skins, or a few dialogue options and stuff like, it, there's just like why would I explore it? I can walk all the way over here, spend like two minutes of my life walking down this path so that I can get ooh this memory that I'm never going to watch. And yeah, the story mode just wasn't fun. I it wasn't too hard either. It was pretty easy. Not that that's something that I can complain about too much, but there wasn't really much ability to make it really challenging. And even though it's not challenging, 
that can be fine. There are easy games that are fun, but they're just... The stuff that wasn't... The fights just wasn't fun. You were just walking around until you reach the next thing, and then, oh, okay, I've finally spent an hour and I've finished this chapter that <laughs> I already know the story of. It just isn't interesting to me, and it lacks that bit of love. There's no... I don't know. I'm not a game designer, so I can't really <laughs> critique of what they should add, but they just need to add things that, like, why would I bother exploring the world? Or have some, like, extra side stories or something that kind of add on to the game, so i be like, oh, these characters have a little bit of plot, and they're not just random people standing around. Or have, like, something else. Let me get more skins, or get more, like, songs that can play through the game, or get, like, alternate colors for the characters. I don't know, I just have literally no desire to go through the story mode, even though that means I can't play half the roster right now. And if literally not being able to play most of the game is more exciting, or <laughs> I would rather not play half of the characters in the game than play the story mode, that is a problem. And they really need to put more love into the story mode <laughs> so that it's not just how you unlock the characters. And yeah, it was not it for me. And the other thing that kind of showed how much the developers don't really care too much about this game, apart from the initial sales, is that that first update that I mentioned where they changed some system mechanics, like with the dashing and stuff, we never really got anything like that again. We got some free updates with some free DLC, which is pretty cool, but I'm not convinced that the demons were not meant to be included on the game with the game on launch. I think they were just accidentally added in late and they couldn't bring themselves to make them pay DLC. And then after they released all those demons, they slowly released the Entertainment District characters, which, you know, are fun DLC. Um, slightly expensive DLC for what they are, but I buy the season pass, so I don't really mind. But yeah, now that they've released all of these characters, along with no balance updates or stuff, it's kind of just radio silence. And after, as people who have played games like, anime games like this before, you kind of know that after, after they've sold you the stuff that you're gonna pay for, they're just kind of gonna clock out and this game is done. And now this is probably the final state of the game, unless they release some more DLC for the next season, which is possible, but we have no evidence of that yet. You kind of just have to accept that this is how the game is, and this is how the game is going to be. So all the things that you don't like about the game, whether it's scaling, some movement problems, how zoning is so powerful, how there's such annoying things, like glitchy things, with like characters falling, like when they're at certain heights and they're invincible when they land, and there's a lot of things that are just kind of weird and unbalanced about the game, and you just have to accept that the developers don't care about that anymore, and it's just going to be left behind. And you either just have to accept that these things are in the game, and you either love it enough to keep playing it, or you'll just move on to another game. And especially in the current landscape of gaming, there are plenty of other games you could be playing. So it's very easy for people to move on and just be like, meh, this game was fun, but I don't really care about it anymore because it just isn't something that I can sustain being fun because it just is kind of a flop and it's fun for a bit of fun, but I would never try to be good at it. And I think that's kind of the state that I've kind of ended up as. Since obviously, of course, I am, I create content for this game that kind of kept me enticed in the game for a lot longer than I think a lot of other people would have been into. I created guides and whenever characters came out, I wanted to know what they could do so I could make videos on them and stuff. But if that wasn't my situation, I don't know how long I would have been um, like really engaged with this game because it just does feel kind of bland knowing that all of this stuff is the same. And that's really unfortunate because it's such a gorgeous looking game and all the characters are really honestly quite fun to play. I plan on making a Daki video after this just because I have been with her in training mode and I forgot how fun she is. So there's just a lot of things that I'm missing out of not playing, but for some reason I just don't have that drive to play the game just because of, you know, how it is and how it just feels like it's stale. And unfortunately that's just how it is with a lot of anime games these days with how anime IPs are sold to game developers. You kind of have to make a game at this like periodic time. So now they've been working on some like mobile game and all that matters is that they make a game every two years or so, sell a bunch of copies and then move on. So there's no real point to make a game that 
um, has any sustain, whether that is sustained with like in-game aspects like exploration or stuff or really complex mechanics or with like extra DLC and updates. There's no point in that because they have no desire to because they're going to be working on a new game anyways. And that's the same thing that's happening like with My Hero Academia. There's that new Fortnite game, Fortnite style game coming out, which I am excited for. But, you know, there's just that little bit of a caveat that you're like, huh, yeah, I guess this is going to be a cool game. But you can tell it's just going to be developed to be cool at the start. And then it's got its micro transaction system working very well. But then it's probably going to be left in the dust after people have bought a bunch of stuff and they've released some DLC. It might just be left behind as a micro transaction machine. But I don't want to be too cynical. I am looking forward to the game, and I will certainly play it, but it just kind of has this bitter taste that you're like, oh, I wish we could just get some good games where they actually really try to make it a sustainable, fun game, where they really care about the, the actual players and making a good final product and not one that can just be sold and left behind. And, um, yeah, that's kind of the note on how the game is now. Currently, it's only the people that really love the game. A lot of pro players have dropped the game. It's only the kind of casual fans that like make some videos on it or just play it online for fun. But basically that's all this game is. Fortunately, due to its lack of online features, there aren't really tournaments or anything because people can't hold them very easily. Only like big streamers like Globku and stuff were able to do them successfully through like weird systems, through Steam Remote Play or whatever. But it's just not easy to do stuff like that. So the community suffers. And yeah, it's just, it's got a decent number, I think a hundred or so online players. But um, yeah, it's just a few players that really enjoyed the game are left playing it. Pro players have left it because there's no point kind of grinding a dead, or it's not a dead game, but it's just kind of a bland game and there's just no real reason to grind it. What are you grinding it for? The tournaments that don't exist and to play people online who like don't take it seriously. And yeah, it's just a, a game for people who ended up really, really loving it. And it makes sense that there are people who love it because it is, it is admittedly, definitely a fun game. Now, as for where the game will be in the future, I don't think it has much of a future at all. Unfortunately, we kind of know how it goes. No matter how much we plead for them to care about this game and give us updates or stuff, there's not really much hope, unfortunately. The only hope is maybe they'll release some more DLC for the next season of Demon Slayer. I forget but what it is, but with that new blue-haired Hashira, I forget what he's even called. But maybe we'll get some DLC for them, but that's kind of really the only hope. And if you're really into the game, the kind of only content you have to look forward to is for community-made content. I believe there is actually like, I forget what it's called, but like Hinokami Chronicles, like the balance update or ultimate mod or whatever it's called, where they've actually balanced the game and changed things through community mods. And that's the only way that the game becomes competitive and active. So yeah, it kind of, because it's bland, it kind of drops itself instantly into a niche game that only the real dedicated people care about at all. And as for how I'm gonna treat this game in the future, um, now that I've picked it up after about three months of not playing, I do admit it is a fun game to go around and press some buttons in, so I will make some occasional videos just, you know, doing some online gameplay. I think I'll actually make a video with Daki right now. But yeah, maybe once every week or a few weeks, I'll make some random videos online, not too serious, not tryharding to be like the best player with any characters or anything, just chilling, having fun, because I think all that that's all the game is meant to be at the moment. And I kind of actually plan to do the same thing with my hero. I'd like to try it out again to see, get a taste for it again. But yeah, that's kind of all I have to say. This game came out like with a lot of potential. It had great graphics, great battle systems, and so much potential to be a great game. And it got reviews for being a great game. And I think it is certainly a good game, but with the fumbles, and the lack of continued support and love, it's just, it's just a game that is good, it had a lot of effort put into it, but unfortunately just with how the systems work, with how these IPs are sold, it never really stood much of a chance of being a great game. But I still think it was really fun and I thank you all for your continued support. These videos and my, my Hero Wants Justice videos are still the videos that can constantly get like, a surprising amount of views, so I'm very, very thankful for that. And yeah, thank you so much. 
and I, I hope the people that do enjoy the game still continue to enjoy my videos and the ones that I make in the future. And thanks for all your support. I would not have enjoyed this game as much without you guys. So thank you so much for watching always. I hope you enjoy this game and whatever games come out in the future because I don't think too many people are left playing this game. So if you do play it, keep enjoying it. And if you don't, let's all look forward to whatever comes next. So thank you so much for watching this 2023 three review. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in whatever comes next. Bye-bye.